Good morning and welcome. I invite you to rise as you're able and face the entrance to the church. Behold, a virgin will conceive and bear a son. His name will be called Emmanuel, God with us. Alleluia. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Almighty God, in choosing the Virgin Mary to become the mother of your son, you made known your gracious regard for the poor, the lowly, and the despised. Grant us grace to receive your word in humility, and so to be made one with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, I've, I've seen a couple of friends wander in who must be very astonished by what they have wandered into, thinking that they went through a time lapse of some kind. No, in fact, here at Epiphany, we are celebrating Christmas in August, uh, the Sunday that is closest to the day of Mary, Mother of our Lord. And so we just think that it's very good to not procrastinate around here. So we go ahead and shop for Christmas presents now in August, so we're fully ready when Christmas season comes that we can give these gifts to the families that we have been delivering food to throughout the year. So thank you to everyone who has participated in that, and if you, like I, have not yet taken the chance to shop for such gifts, um, know that we will be particularly on the lookout for them through the rest of August. They can, in, the tree will not remain up, just so you know. The tree will not remain up. However, you can put them in the grocery cart that is by the door uh, to the, from the courtyard and we will continue to stock those away. If you're not sure what you should be getting for presents, there is a list of possibilities in your Tower Light and your E-Tower Light and your E-Herald. Um, so again, welcome, welcome to worship today. Uh, you should have your welcome pad, so if you can make sure to fill those out, and if you have already done so, you can also use that as, um, as a cheat sheet for looking at who else is in your pew if you don't know their name yet. Um, so please take an opportunity to do that. Also, if you are joining us online, we invite you to go ahead and uh, send your greetings in the comments. I do have one prayer request to pass on to you all today, and that is that Connie Schneider has been in rehab for um, about a month now, and she is not doing great. Um, so if you have an opportunity to uh, go and visit her or to uh, call her or to send her a note, I know that those, um, that those signs of love and affection would be greatly appreciated, and by all means, please pray for her and for her recovery. Um, we do have a piano recital tonight at 6 p.m. featuring Ching Yi Lin, who will be playing uh, Rachmaninoff tonight. The concert will be a little less than an hour, and then we will um, have a light reception afterwards. So please come and join us. We are on the lookout for people who might be willing to serve as communion assistants uh, so that we can stop our practice of just grabbing people at will in the middle of the service, um, but can actually assign folks. And so if that's something you would like to do, it is a way to serve in worship that is meaningful but does not require any public speaking. So uh, we encourage you to sign up for that. You can actually speak to Deacon Doug, who currently has headphones on because he's at the soundboard. Um, there are a few things that you should save the date for. On September 17th, we have only one service at 10 a.m., followed by our annual meeting, followed by that afternoon our crab feast at 3 p.m. And so there is a sign up in the comments for the crab feast. Um, Linda has figured out the price of the tickets, which is $65. She asked that if you have signed up, um, that you go ahead and write a check to her because she is the one purchasing the crabs. And Linda Gruz is that name. Linda Gruz, G-R-U-Z-S. <laughs> and so you can go ahead and take care of that. Um, and she asked that you give that to her by September 1st so she can make those purchases. And then please also save the date for our biggest fundraiser of the year on October 1st, the designer bag bingo. I understand that all the bags have been purchased, so now we just need the actual bingo so that those prizes can be awarded. Please um, sign up to help with that event. 
And then council is meeting today, and um, I don't often announce the council is happening, but you should know that anytime you see it in the schedule, um, you are welcome to attend. Those are technically open meetings, so I know you are just eager to come sit for an hour, an hour and a half meeting. It's really not as bad as it sounds, and we talk about some pretty important things. And so, uh, in particular, today it will really be a preview of everything we talk about at the annual meeting in September. That will include talking through the proposed budget and finalizing it to be sent out to the congregation this week. It will include uh, going through our potential nominees and settling on four of them for, uh, for council for the coming year, for the, for the two-year term. And it will also include some property, uh, property issues that are ongoing that we are hoping to tackle. Um, you are welcome to listen in. And then finally, uh, the parking lot, as you can see, continues to be worked on. There was a lot of planting that happened this week. Um, this week, starting tomorrow morning, the parking lot will be closed. So the entire parking lot will be stripped. Um, so they'll take away pavement and they will repave it and they will stripe it just this week, Monday through Friday. And so I will note that that means that on Wednesday when you come to worship, and by the way, please come to worship because otherwise we'll, we will offend Pastor Freeze. Um, please come on Wednesday, but if you are someone who is able-bodied um, in such a way that walking a little further is not an, is an issue for you, please consider parking further away so that those who, um, whose every step hurts <laughs> um, have an opportunity to come to worship and not park too far away. I will note that there is parking on Sedonia. They like uh, painted that line on the street that provides parking spaces on the right-hand side, so that is uh, a good spot to consider parking. And of course, you can park further down Rasp or further down Rasp the other way. Um, but please, please be attentive to caring for one another in that way. All right. And now we continue our worship with uh, reading from God's Word. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Because the shame of God's people was double, and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot, therefore they shall possess a double portion, everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliest of the servants. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. 
For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, some of you know that I have a dear friend who has really been through the ringer over these last couple of years. She has experienced what many young people hope for after marriage. She has experienced the birth of two beautiful baby boys. And just over a year later, her wonderful husband and our dear friend died of cancer. And nothing has been easy. Everything has been hard. That is, despite the fact that she is surrounded by a loving and generous community, everything has been hard. Work and sleep and illnesses and hospital stays and health challenges for even more family members. Why? Why does life have to be so hard? But I know and you know that my friend is not alone. I can look out among you gathered here today and I know, I know what hardships you have experienced in your own life and in the lives of those you love. So much loss, so much pain, so many broken relationships, broken hearts, and so much change. And beyond even those here, housing is unattainable for so many. There is devastation in Maui from the wildfire there, and then mental health challenges ever since the pandemic began has, be, has become a pandemic in itself. Doesn't everyone and everything feel vulnerable these days? Maybe we are living in just such a time when we can more fully enter into the space that Mary was in when she sings her Magnificat, when the whole world around her is changing. Yes, she is full of joy and wonder, but at the same time she is pregnant, yay, but not of her own choosing. She is unmarried. She is living in a world dominated by tyrants who threaten her own country's very existence. She is forced to leave her home while pregnant, finally taking shelter wherever she can, in a stable. Maybe in the complexities of our world today, we can start to understand the world that Mary was living in. How does Mary do it? It's not as though she just pretends everything is okay. You can hear within her song that she acknowledges the tough realities of the world in which she is living. She doesn't just ignore the challenges pressing in around her. How does she manage to stare down her adversaries? Adversaries that, by the way, aren't even tangible but are tyrants, and hunger, and injustice. How does Mary defy the odds, the pressure, the world? Well, I hope you'll forgive me by first telling you what the answer isn't. 
It isn't that Mary is a superhero with extraordinary power and wisdom. It isn't that Mary is just smarter (laughs) or stronger than you or I. No, what Mary has is actually something that we all have, and it might not feel like enough somehow in the midst of the complexities of our world, and yet it is something that Mary had that got her through. What Mary had was the promises of God. Promises that, as Isaiah proclaimed, we have a God who loves justice and hates wrongdoing. A God who promises us everlasting joy and to clothe us in righteousness. And we might might not much like the book of Revelation, and yet what is made crystal clear in that book is that God in the end wins. (laughs) Which means that justice wins. And love wins. What Mary does is she merely takes the promises of God and proclaims them defiantly and joyfully and hopefully. What Mary has is a deep knowledge of just how vulnerable she is and an equally deep knowledge of how faithful God is. That is the favor God has shown Mary. That is the favor God shows us. When the world tells us we aren't good enough, we boldly proclaim the promise of God that we are holy and beloved, that we are those sinners called saints. When the world tells us addiction is a personal failing and not worth the resources we throw at it, we boldly claim our higher power and hold one another up in love and hope. When the world tells us we are not worthy of love, we dare to love ourselves as God made us and step into loving community. When the world tells us the poor are poor because they're bad or stupid, we proclaim the stories of Jesus who walked with the poor and forgotten, and we go out of our way to feed those who are hungry. Every week we gather food and we send food out and we make deliveries and we then take these Christmas presents so that a child will wake up on Christmas morning with the chaos of the world still going on around them and yet they will have a sign that God is faithful, that they are worthy of love and care. You are are right. Everything and everyone does feel so very vulnerable these days. No one escapes free from the violence that is around our world and our city, or family strife, or the effects of climate change, or addiction. And at the same time, my soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. God keeps God's promises. That through the storm of this life, God will keep speaking and using us to tell God's promises. In Jesus' name, amen.
Emboldened and encouraged by the faith of Mary, let us pray in thanksgiving to God for his love and offer ourselves in return. For the gift of eternal life, when Christ took our sins to the cross, we pray in thanksgiving for life on earth and in eternity. God of grace, for a place to share in our words and deeds that God is love. For those who supported this collection of toys and for the love they show in simple acts, we pray for continued strength and ability to keep and to grow and to share this ministry entrusted to us. God of grace, hear our prayer. For our pastors and deacons, and our congregational council and leaders among us, and for congregation volunteers, for the hours they spend, for the work they do and talents they share, for the ways we steward the resources of this congregation, God of grace, hear our prayer. For all who are in need, spiritually, mentally, or physically, May the Lord bring gifts of healing and wholeness to all in need, particularly those whose names we rise aloud or silently in our hearts. We pray for comfort and healing. God of grace, hear our prayer. For your grace and forgiveness, even though we are not worthy, it is through your word and through the life of your Son that we can celebrate with all saints who have gone before us. We pray in thanksgiving for your gift of eternal life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all who, for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now we share a sign of Christ's peace with one another.
And now at this time, we uh, pause to take an offering from the congregation. As the ushers come forward, we will distribute the plates. You can also give uh, through the website, god-is-love.org slash donate. And we are grateful for all the ways you support this ministry that we share. as we're able and sing that one more time. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the memory of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again. By your spirit, bless us and this bread and cup that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. And now joining with saints past and present, let us pray together as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come. 
to the banquet. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Just a reminder that this is not Epiphany's table. It is not even a Lutheran table. It is the Lord's table, and all are welcome at this feast. You are invited to come forward at the invitation of the ushers. They will have you first come to Pastor Freeze, who will be in the middle with the bread, and then you go to either side, uh, usually the side you're coming from, to either drink from the first cup, which is uh, red wine, or to, having held on to your wafer, dip it into the first small cup of red wine or the second small cup of white grape juice, and thereby receive God's promise of grace in this meal. You are also invited before or after receiving communion to come forward and, and pray with me. If you have something particular that you would like to lift up in prayer, just let me know and I will gladly pray with you. Come, all is now ready.
Please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I invite you to tarry for a time uh, as you leave today and enjoy some refreshment in the commons. And now may you know again the joy of the angels, the faithfulness of Joseph and Mary, the amazement of the shepherds, and the love of the Christ child. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Tell the good news that God is love. Encourage.